Well, I thought I was done with that living room and then, well, things changed. Basically, I talked to the realtor. We talked about what the goals were in that shot and I went ahead and decided I was going to go ahead and try for that shot with the big window. It turns out I ended up using the one that I shot later in the day because I had better light. But for now, we're just gonna look at the earlier shoot with the light streaming through the window and getting that shot that way. But before we can even begin, we have a little bit of a camera problem. I know I did this in a previous lesson, but I'm going to show you right here right now again. Dead battery. That, honestly, it's so dead because I've been shooting so many videos. So, what do I have right here? I don't even have to stop. Go right into my pocket. And I have a spare battery. So, I'm just going to pop this bad boy out. And then, to code for myself, I keep my charged here. And I keep my dead here on this side. So, I put the dead there. And that helps me when I get back to keep my batteries all fully charged. There we go, fully charged. There we go. I am gonna shoot this shot. I learned something from the real turn. They do not like those streaks or anything either. And it turns out they're not on the front of the glass, not on the back of the glass. They're in the interior of the glass. So they are actually going to replace that glass. Ordinarily, I would not clean that up or fake it, but this is a realtor I know and I can trust. And if he tells me he's replacing that glass and to cut a better image out of this, I'm going to cut a better image out of this. So yeah, it's, I don't think an ethical question. Once a realtor tells me that that's what they want done, I'm going to do it because it's their job, ultimately not mine. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to set up this shot. Let's see where we go with it. Okay, I kind of started there, but I'm going to talk with you guys and see what do you think is wrong with this? Well, the left and the top, too much of both of those. So we could either crop in or we can zoom in. I think ultimately the frame I'm looking for is something like that right there. But that, as you saw, I had to tilt down. So I'm going to tilt back up to level. This is shooting for the edit. I know what I'm going to end up getting. So I'm going to get there. So I've got enough space on the bottom. I'm going to crop left a lot, top a lot, right just a little bit. And that will be my shot. One of the things I've said is shoot smart, not hard. That original wide shot where um, you're shooting down the hallway. If you're showing the whole hallway, you're shooting hard. Shoot smart, cut halfway into that hallway. You're still gonna be able to tell it's a hallway, but it's gonna be much easier to light. What do I mean? If you shoot that whole hallway, what are you gonna to do to light it? Where are you gonna light it? The About the only way to do it is to put a light here and light this side, and then put a light here and light that side. But I'm just gonna put one light here, and that's gonna fill this whole area. And then I'm going to cut my frame line right there so that I don't see that. And that'll be the start of my frame. So now I don't have to worry about two or three extra shots and all that. I can just do this in one and wrap it up quickly and easily. That's shooting smarter. All right, I'm taking B and I'm gonna fill from here, which should be out of shot. And then I took D and I put it up there which should light all this area. So that should be all the lighting that I need for my base exposure. So now let's just come back here, bring it down just a teeny bit. I'm still gonna go five on the brackets since we've got such a bright window. That way I've just covered myself. So let's go ahead and shoot. Oh, I gotta put the timer back on because I replaced the battery, didn't I? Yep. All right, here we go. All right, I think I've got that covered. Let's expose for the window. Uh oh, we're at 500. Get back down to 200. 
That's still too bright. Let's take this down. Oh, because it reset. That's right. You can see the window's going very blue there. That's why when I pull a window, I'll usually add a little yellow, but it's definitely going blue there. Let's go back to single exposure. Let's just nail one through the window. I might actually be able to just clean that up. That actually, well, it's hard to tell on a small screen, but Anyway, let's turn our flashes on, and I have adjusted nothing. Let's see what we get. Okay, so let's go a little bit higher in the hallway. D needs to be a lot higher, and B needs to be a lot higher. So B is at one half. We're going to have to go up to one. C will just go up a teeny bit. There we go. And D needs to go up a lot. Let's try it again. That's pretty cool. I like this shadow and stuff in there. That's pretty cool. That dark area back there is not going to cut it. But that is, I could probably use that and put a couple more flash exposures together and really make that look really, really good. Notice once we start using flash, we're getting reflections on our windows. That's why we took a solo unflashed window pole so that we didn't get any glare. So if we get any glare, we can easily cut it out. All right, so where are our problem areas? Back there. I'm gonna go ahead, since I'm doing another shot, I'm gonna move the flash in the hallway just so I've got optional lighting. I think what we need is some more heavier light coming in on the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring D, since it's so much more powerful, in here to fill. Uh-oh, I'm in AE lock. How did I do that? I don't even know what that is. And then I'm going to take B, and let's look at this problem area. Let's see. You know what? We can just put it right here like that and probably fix it. Let's see what happens. Oh, I forgot to move C, I'm a dummy. You know, overall, that's pretty good. We're getting a nice flat exposure, I like that. Now let's go for our light in the window exposure and I won't be a dummy and forget to move C this time. Just move it. This is how I always break B. B does not have a strong magnets, and every time I grab it by the bulbous, it falls. D is gonna be Mr. Sunlight. Come on, D. Gonna just put you right there. Thank you so much. And then I'm just gonna use this for a light fill from here. Thing I need to remember is to take D, oh D is all the way up, so that'll work. Let's see what we do. I really like how the light is on the pillows of the couch and all that. That's what I really want out of this picture. So that works really, really good. So I think we're done in this room. There wasn't a whole lot special about that part of the shoot. I mean, we moved around a couple of the flashes and that's about it. We'll have to blend a couple of different flash layers, but uh, it should be a, a fairly straightforward and, and fairly fast edit. So let's get on it. All right, let's start with, let's see, which is the first image in this series? It's. that one and let's take a look at that really like this right in here and right in here that looks really good obviously too dark and obviously too bright but that with very little adjustment is a really good first image I think I want to bring in a little bit more contrast and let's go let's set our white balance right on that looks good you know it looks a little red i'm going to bring just a little bit of green now 
too much. I'm going to go down here and pull. Doesn't that just look? There we go. I think that looks was orange, it turns out to be. Anyway, that looks good. Let's go ahead and mark that as a green, which is a pick in my language. So that'll be good for the main part. Now let's copy that directly into this one. And let's bring the exposure up some. What I'm looking for now is I want to see these at the edge break up. I want to see those about to go white, but just a hair down from going white. I'm not worried about the window necessarily. To me, my five brackets are all about the main part. I've got a separate exposure that I use for the window pull, so I'm not even thinking about that. But I am thinking very seriously about these being on just the edge of being white. I'm going to go ahead and open up the shadows a little bit more too. That helps me bring the darker and the lighter images together easier. They're, they don't look as... as um, HDRE to use a, uh, a term. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and green that. And then I'm going to take that and copy that to the next overexposure. Hit previous. Obviously, that's way too much. I'm now looking here at this hallway. That's really the thing I'm going to have to bring out in this one. So I'm looking at that. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and do a white balance down the hallway, too, to make sure. And did you see how that took out a little bit of the red? Uh, that's going to be really good. Let's add just a little bit of yellow. I'm seeing a little bit of blue in there I don't like. So those are my three that are going to make up my ambient layer. Now, this layer will be the window pull. I know it's ugly. What I had originally thought about doing here was just going outside the window, taking a shot there, and then cutting that into the shot. It turns out this shot was never used in this series because I came back later on when I was doing the dusk shots and got some incredible twilights. There will be a video on that. It's already shot. It's just a couple weeks probably away. So I never really had to use this shot. Uh, but I'm going to pretend that the window is good here and that we can use it. And I'm going to show you how I would have used this. I'm looking at that and I just honestly, that that isn't too bad a window right there. I want it a little bit hotter. Again, I'm kind of looking up here. It should be on the edge of blowing out, but not blowing out. Windows should always be a little bit brighter than interiors too. Also, to me, and I've said this before, it looks like it's going blue, so I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it to take the blue out of the shadows. And I think as a window pull, other than that window yuckiness, this works. So that works really good. I'm going to green that. This is also, as I look at this, I really like this little bit of gold that's in this sunlight down in here. I'm going to add that to our highlight image. So I'm going back to that. And I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow there so that this goes and it just adds a little bit of warmth. I love I love sunlight. I love warmth. To me, that's happy and that pulls people in, at least in my mind it does. So I'm going to make that change. So we've got our window pulled. Now let's start looking at our flashes. This one was not good enough. This one, let's see, that's good. Do I need this one? Let's go ahead and develop it just in case. So let's bring it up to about there. I guess we're getting orange reflecting off the carpet. That's where that orange is coming from. So let's go in here, hit a white balance off of that, and pop back out. That looks pretty good. Let's take the orange down because I see it on the couch there. That looks better. That's not too bad. Add a little bit more black in that. And then back here we're getting some blue. So I'm going to pull that blue down. There we go. That looks pretty good. We're going to green this. I'm not sure that we're going to use it though do like this next image a lot better. 
I'm going to hit previous there. See, that works so much better. I think this works really, really good. As I look at it, I don't like those shadows. I'm not worried about that. Those will go away. And again, notice that our highlights right in here, they're at the edge of burning in, but they're not burnt in. We've got definition there. So that's exactly where I want this exposure. So I am going to use that, and I'm going to take the one before it, and we're not going to use that. I don't think we need that. So we'll take that, and then we'll do a direct copy to this one. And we're going to bring the exposure up. And I'm looking mainly at getting the light on the couch, across the couch here, and all that. And that looks pretty good. I love this shadow up here from the chandelier. And the flash is, is making that. So that is pretty good. So let's green that. Grab my keyboard. And we're going to, just in case you don't know how to select multiples, um, I use an Apple, so I just start clicking on them and I'm holding down the command key and that lets me select multiple items. And then I have a shortcut, I use F10 and that sends them all over to this thing I like to call Photoshop. All right, so we've got all our images now in Photoshop. The first thing I do is my shortcut key F2 I hit and that aligns all the images just in case there's been a little bit of movement. If you're shooting on carpet, you probably will have movement no matter how good your tripod is. So it's always a good idea, even if there's just a little bit of movement to align them so that they all look good together. When you shoot in the order that I do, which is your ambience, your window pole, and then your, your flash, when you shoot it over to Photoshop, things are probably going to be about backwards to how you want to use them. They're backwards for how I want to use them. So that's where I'm going to start with. So our top layer is the middle ambient. And below that is the dark ambient. I'm going to want them in that order. I want the dark ambient at the very bottom with the medium ambient right above it. So I'm going to take those two and drag those all the way to the bottom. Then we've got our high ambient, and I'm going to want that on top of those three. So our bottom three are now the ones that I want. High ambient, middle ambient, dark ambient in that order. So those are all good. The next one is the window pull. And for now, I'm just going to turn it off. And then these two are our flashes. And I'm just going to put them in their own folder and give them a white layer mask so that they're not affected. We have those in the right order. Notice how this one is a fairly good coverage and all that. That's what we're going to use to repair the flash in the window layer with. So I hit F4 and get a black layer on that. And now I'm going to start painting with white to take out the glare. It's way too high a flow. Let's bring that flow way down. You know, I want to be able to bring that in more subtly like that. And then let's take this and bring in more of the, the hallway. We do see these two flashes there. I'm okay with that because I know, I think I said when I was shooting it, I was going to crop in from that side. So they'll, they'll be gone by the time I um, finish this. And I'm just kind of looking around for... Oh, yeah, let's take that flash off the... There, that looks pretty good. There we go. As a flash layer, that's pretty acceptable. Now, since we're... Here, let's just go ahead and bring in the window pull as if this were a good window pull. I know I talked about it and I said that I would have gone out the window and shot that from outside and then layered it in. This is where I would have layered it in. 
I would have cut this exact same mask here. And then I would have used it on the outside picture. I would have used, I would have used, what do you call it? Transform to size it to the same size as the actual view or as close as I could get. As long as you get it close, nobody's going to know the difference. It'll be, it'll work. So here we go. Just keep bringing these in. Also, you'll notice that I use that window pull on the very topmost layer. That way, if we get any reflections from the flash or anything else, this will, since it's the topmost layer, it'll cut it out. And then what I do, you'll see at the very end, once I've got this completely cut in, I will bring down the opacity if it looks a little bit over the top to try and balance it and make it look right. So, I know this is super boring. I'm super sorry. We just have this one more window to go. Then we'll be done. And we're almost there. And there we go. So let's hit the mask button and there is our window pull. As I said, it's a little, I knew it wasn't going to be quite right. So let's bring that opacity down a little bit to where it blows out just a little bit more. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, now let's turn off the flash layers and the window pull layers put a black mask on our overexposure and our middle exposure and start with our underexposure and let's start bringing in the middle exposure. And we just paint this in where we like it, but trying to avoid the hot spots. We don't want, if, if we bring in the hot spots, they're gonna go and blow out and that's not what we want. So, being very careful around those hot spots. We can go like this and bring in, you know, the, the things that surround the windows so that they don't look dark because we do have that window pull and that'll save the window. So there we go. And let's make the ceiling look as even as we can. And I want to bring that hallway up as much as I can and I knew I wouldn't be able to, which is why I pulled in one of those darker or brighter layers just for that. And that's this layer. So now let's start to bring that in. And the floor and all. And that should even all that out. Let's bring in some of that couch there. Yeah, that looks pretty good that dark spot out get that dark spot out and there's a dark spot there yeah there we go I think that looks pretty good and even let's bring that in all right I always tend to like do maybe a little bit too much in this part so it's it's probably a good idea especially when you're bringing in that highlight layer Get it to where you think it looks good and then bring that opacity down a little bit so that it doesn't look too painted in. That's a little too much. Yeah, right about in there. Oh, see, that looks horrible. Let's control Z out of that. See, I think there's just a little. Yeah, right there. That looks a little better. All right. Now let's bring in the flash layer and bring the flash layer down to in the 75, 80% range round in there. And then let's start painting in with black to get rid of those shadows and try and just make everything look nice and real. I'm going to bring in the whole floor there because even if there's only 30 seconds or so between those shots, the sun moves and you can see those shadows move. So I'm just going to bring in a single version of those shadows because otherwise it doesn't look right. 
And let's take that shadow out. I really like this shadow against the back wall, so I'm going to leave that in. Take out some of the flashy look in that hallway. Yeah, I'd say all in all, that looks not too bad. Could have even done this without a window pull, but let's bring that window pull in. Yeah, see, it's almost exactly the same. Off, on, off, on. So that's about where I want it. it does add a little bit of that yellow that I wanted in there. So we'll leave it in there. That's a pretty dang good picture. So now we're going to shoot it back to Lightroom. Command S. Back to the Lightrooms. And this is where we'll do all our adjustments on a single layer. Uh, things like, um, you know, our verticals. Um, I'll look at the windows and see if there's any chromatic aberrations or anything like that in there. But this is where we do all the things that have to be do, done the same to multiple layers. And that's what I'm doing here. So let's start with our verticals. And as I think I've said before, I like to go as far to the left and the right as I can. And I've got two very strong verticals on both the left and the right. So there we go. Now we're nice and straight and even. That looks pretty good. I'm going to zoom in. This is usually where you're going to see chromatic aberration is right there in the windows. I'm not seeing enough that I even want to worry about it. So let's send this right back to Photoshop. Let me make sure I closed out of it. Nope, I didn't. You don't close out of it. It won't send the new version from Lightroom back to Photoshop. So do that. Now send it back to Lightroom again. Edit with Lightroom Adjustments at this point, because we want all the Lightroom Adjustments. There we are, a nice good single layer. I thought I saw some sensor dust. Did I? It's always a good idea to go through and look at things real close up and see. There's a, a hook there. That's something the homeowner put there. I'm just going to leave it. It's hardly noticeable and I don't think it's that big a deal. Yeah, I think things look pretty good. Uh, C is still there. That is going to disappear by the time I do my crop, so I'm not even worried about that. Yeah, I think overall we're good here. So our next step is to denoise this, and I'm going to use Topaz Photo AI. Again, if you have a preference, if you have a good denoiser that you like, use it. I use this. There's, I know there's a couple of other very, very good ones. There's even one in Lightroom itself. I just personally kind of like this one. I've gotten used to it. It's my workflow. And... Damn it, it's my tutorial. I'll use what I want. So I'm going to just do a, a light sharpen on all. We're going to bring that down just to there and then denoise it all and export it right back. There we go. That looks really good. Now I'm going to make a copy of it in case I need to go back. You know, that way I'll have a division between the... the the nick effects and and the sharpening so i have a preset oh that looks horrible and look how spotty this the ceiling looks i was not very good at evening that out was i at this point you could go back and re-edit that i just know that right now nick is way cranked up and i think by bringing down these and bringing up my exposure levels here. I think I can make that disappear. Make it usable. I think that looks pretty good. Let's see what that does. I'm playing with the contrast right now. Now I cannot unsee that ceiling. You know what we're going to do? Just because, again, this is a tutorial, we're going to cancel out of this. 
close without saving. And we're going to go back and fix that because we should. So let's go back to, this is the TIFF that was the multi-layer. Remember how when I send it to Photoshop, I said send it with Lightroom adjustments. We're going to redo that now. We're going to send it as an original. So it's now going to reopen with all the layers. So I'll be able to fix that ceiling, send it back. And the cool thing is, is Lightroom's going to remember the, all those verticals and things like that. So we're not going to have to refix that. But let's see, let's go. I think it's going to be in the Lightroom or the, the lit flash layer that needs to Maybe a little there. Is that where it's coming from? Let's try a little bit of white here. There we go. There, look at that. There we go. That's evening that out. And let's see if we can even that out. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a select on this wall. And... That was a bad select, so control Z. Let's go to there. That should select it really good. I'm selecting a layer that I think is going to have a good contrast for Photoshop to pick just that wall up out of. And there, see it did. So now I'm just going to control minus all the stuff I don't want. So I don't want any of that. I don't want any of that. And I don't want any of the rest of the picture. All I want is that one wall. And there, now we've got it selected. And now I'm going to go back in and paint it in. And I'm going to really bring that flow down so that I can do this subtly because, you know, we don't want to go too much. We just want to even that out. There we go. There, now that wall should be fairly even and not splotchy like it was. So deselect yeah i think that looks pretty good and i think our sky, our sky our ceiling looks a lot more even than it did so we're going to hit command save that'll ship it back to lightroom and it's saved as the same name so like i said we're going to have in lightroom we're still going to have our verticals and all that but with a less splotchy image and then we just turn around and send it right back to photoshop but this time, instead of edit original, we go back to Lightroom adjustments. So now it's post adjustment rather than all those layers. So we're back here. We have to go through and do our topaz again. That's okay. Sharpen, and we're gonna sharpen all, and we're gonna take it down to about 17 or 18, denoise, and send it right back. We went through all this, two minutes ago, right? If you see a problem like that and it bothers you, you probably should fix it because it will, you'll always see it. You cannot unsee it once you see it. And, you know, if you're being paid 120 bucks to do this, don't. <laughs> but if if you're, you know, working at a higher level and, and your customers expect really high quality images give them high quality images all right yeah that ceiling looks a lot better the wall is still a little splotchy but we're going to cut most of that out anyway so i don't care oh no a phone call i'm in the middle of a tutorial i'm going to have to call you back all right so let's move that center no, I think I'm going to put the center right here. Split it between that side of the couch. And then let's bring that up a lot. And then the rest of the house. There we go. Yeah, I think that looks pretty natural. And bring our contrast down a little bit. I think we've got too much saturation. So I'm bringing the saturation down. Otherwise, I think that looks pretty good. Let's hit apply, see where this is going to end up. 
maybe bring that opacity down just a teeny bit and now that looks pretty good let's send it back to lightroom we'll do our final crop in lightroom and then this image should be ready to go okay so i know i want to come to about there i know i want to come to about there and i know i want a lot less ceiling and i'm liking this powerpoint right here i think that i think that lines up really really good let's take a look at that and that is our final image i think that works pretty good maybe bring the highlights down just a little bit and what about contrast and let's take a little bit more orange out i think that's good all right that's the end so i hope you like this if you have any ideas or suggestions or anything please let me know um i had a lot of fun doing this i hope you look got something out of it learned something and may your next image be your best image